to speak a pastoral word to you as I promised a moment ago. I've entitled this little word that I'd like to share with you called Let the Community Return. I want to say a few things based out of my understanding of Colossians chapter 3, some of my favorite verses in Scripture, particularly verses 12 to 17, about what that community is that we're looking forward to returning to. This is a reminder of who we are. But I want to begin by acknowledging that fire has been our primary source for many of us this week to get through this storm. And some of you actually have wood-burning fireplaces, and you've watched that fireplace pile diminish, I know. And as it's diminished, you have worried whether you're going to be able to stay warm until we get the electricity back on. And so you probably have nurtured your embers carefully, I bet. <laughs> you know, you've kept them close together. So when they're close together, they continue to provide the heat needed. And if the closer they are together, the more you can stir up more heat as it gets colder. Because we all know that when embers start to separate or when one begins to isolate, that ember that was a hot burning fire in one moment can become a cool cinder almost in the next moment. The embers of the fire need to be together. We, as members of this community of faith, are like burning embers. I know you've probably thought about that symbol before. And you might say, as these last almost year has gone by, we have worked hard to keep the fires burning at PFUMC, and I do not have time to say thanks for all of you and what you've done to keep those fires burning. But I know some of you are like me. I have begun to worry. I've begun to worry now that we move almost to the end of this first year, that the isolation has taken its toll, or the separation of the burning embers, if you want to use each one of us as a burning ember, the separation has maybe tuned our, toned down our fire a little less. Isolation has an impact on the human condition that is unavoidable. It is universal. The equation is simple. The more alone we are, equaling the lonelier we are. I probably have never felt more lonely than I felt in these last week as we endured these days. And some of you have told me, we've talked to you together about the loneliness you feel. We've learned many lessons through this pandemic. First and foremost, we should have learned through this pandemic that doing the faith journey alone is not meant to be. And while it can go for a season, going at it alone, just me and you and God out of the lake, is a fallacy that's undergirded by our overblown egos. But the church is more than just donuts and a cup of coffee before going to brunch. No, the community of faith that needs to return is a community that depends on each other. It's a social adventure. And we all know the, the analogy Paul used in 1 Corinthians 13 about the body and the member, be the body of Christ be having many different members. You know, we can have these five fingers as we have, but that five fingers got to have a wrist, and that wrist has to have an arm to make it move around, right? And then it has to have a heart and a, a circulatory system to keep these five fingers alive. And, and then I have to have a, a brain and a nervous system to tell them what to do next. The hand can't go at it alone, as Paul said so eloquently, and I guess unless you're the Adams family. <laughs> you can insert groan if you like. We need to be together to fully be the body of Christ. And surely we have learned, or it's been underlined and older, emphasized, that we cannot do it without each other. So we call ourselves a fellowship. The church is a fellowship, which is one of Paul's favorite metaphors to talk about the community of faith. It comes from that word koinonia, 
I know you've heard spoken of a long time. Koinonia simply translates a community of mutual love, shared love. And we are a people of God who share love between all the members of that body. And that church is, our church's mutual love for each other is rooted in the love of God that has for each one of us. And God's love is not some abstract idea. God did not whisper in the wind, but came in the flesh to be seen and heard and felt. God's love is experienced in real relationships. So that's what a fellowship is. A mutual community sharing the love of God between each other. Let me put a finer point on that. Let me say quick three quick things what a fellowship does. A fellowship shares. We care for one another in ways so that we care for the well-being of the other person in the same way we care for our own, which means that we're willing to share what we have for the sake of others in the fellowship. And I've seen it happen this last week. <laughs> the way you've shared what you had with each other through this storm. You've shared water, you've shared firewood, you've shared tools, a sundry of other goods as you saw the need. We've shared with each other because that's what a fellowship does. Also, a fellowship nourishes. The word nourish comes from the word to nurse. <laughs> we care for we, a fellowship cares for each other like a nursing mother would give tender and loving care to her newborn. That's in a fellowship at its best. <laughs> I've seen you. If I pass the encouragement plate around, you want to put some in for the sake of others to nurture them, nourish them, nurse them. You love celebrating each other's successes. You love building up each other. You love seeing those smile with joy. But you also see you nurse. Nurse in such a way those who are sorrowful, those who are hurting, those who are lonely. Yeah. Yes, a fellowship does share with each other. It nourishes each other. And as a result, the fellowship will expand. I'm not going numbers on you here, but a fellowship that shares and nurtures each other, that's in qualitative experiences, will have quantitative growth. Now, I'm afraid that we might have shrunk through this year. We may not have the same numbers we had when it began. I know at least we haven't experienced a year's worth of growth we would have experienced if we'd been together. But we need to have fellowship again that's real in person so that we can be the body of Christ that welcomes and affirms and shows sincere interest that includes other rather than excludes and that has to be done in relationships. We can talk about it all we want. It doesn't matter what we say. It's what we do in making sure that we're sharing with all, nurturing all, saying, whosoever will come, sing it loudly, all. <laughs> and that's why. It's time for in-person fellowship again. I believe and feel in my heart of hearts that we can begin to offer outdoor and in-person services within the next few weeks or month or two. Now, of course, we're trending in the right direction and we need these hospital hospital uh, numbers to go down. We need new cases to continue to drop as they are. And I also believe we can do this because a couple things have happened that are good. 
We know that we need to be safe when we're with each other. And also, those who might have been most vulnerable to the virus and to its effects will have completed the vaccine process within the next few weeks. So, I'm going to be meeting with the council this week. And I'm going to recommend to them a re-entry plan that some of the key leaders, I've already discussed with some of the key leaders. Yes, we have some specifics in mind. But move us just move us beyond streaming, though streaming will always continue. It's just going to be a part of who we are. But we can move beyond streaming our worship fellowship experiences to outdoor and indoor experiences. Of course, we'll incorporate social distancing and we will wear masks. And when we're in the sanctuary, for the time being, we'll have to limit the number to about 130 or so people. That make it necessary for us to employ some kind of system so we don't have overcrowding. So pray for your administration council and your pastors as we discern how we can begin to offer these kinds of worship, in-person, fellowship experiences. Let me address, though, two ends of the spectrum. And knowing most of us fall somewhere along the spectrum. First, there are those that are highly, highly concerned about reentry. And I affirm, it can feel dangerous not knowing who is in the room with you. And frankly, I must admit, my own concerns have lessened since contracting the virus, knowing my vaccine process will be complete sometime in March. I'm not sure if those two things had not occurred, I would be ready to make those recommendations. I, I would feel a bit more trepidation about leading in-person worship. So listen, my friends, I and we respect your highly concerned feelings. And you respect those feelings too. And only return when you feel safe. Whether that be to an outdoor worship experience or an in-person experience. And my friends, as each one of us as members of the body of Christ, we can help lessen those concerns by all of us seeking the vaccine when we qualify and strictly continuing to adhere to all the safety protocols. Second, group on the other end of the spectrum. There are those of you who have much less concern about reentry. I respect those views too, and I trust you believe we can do everything possible to maintain safety for the sake of others. And frankly, one more time, frankly, you who have lesser concerns are the reason I'm bringing this recommendation to move ahead with in-person experiences. I feel the same thing you feel. Those of you who want to be together again, I they have a great need to reconnect. So I'm looking forward to the council figuring out how we can offer various and safe forms to gather together to be a fellowship that shares and nurtures one another until we can complete this vaccine process. And all can begin to feel much less concern. Little by little, we will close the gap between those who are greatly concerned and those who have less concerns. And I promise you this, as that gap closes, the need we have to be together will be addressed in the coming days and will be determined as the council sees fit and I'll be providing you an update sometime in the next seven to ten days on what that might look like. We shall have fellowship again. A fellowship that shares with one another, nurtures with one another, and begins to expand because we are a winsome people that looks like the love of God in action. So, from a chair in my office to eventually to inside the pew, inside that chancel. Let the community return. Mm -hmm.